Hi, everyone. I'm Chinhe Lee, founding partner of GBIC. Uh, GBIC is a crypto fund based in South Korea, China, and United States. And we have been investing in blockchain technology and ecosystem since early 2017. Our portfolio companies include Vapor Labs, which launched NBA Top Shot, CryptoKitties, FTX, Decentraland, and Terra and Luna, etc. And I'm very honored to join the second DeFi Virtual Summit organized by CM Commercial Bank. Today, I have Ryan Foti from OpenSea to talk about the NFT market. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? It's great to be here. Very honored to have you. So to start with, can you please give us a quick intro of OpenSea and yourself? And especially, I know that you used to work uh, for Uber, which is uh, just a traditional uh, company. And want to know why you decided to join OpenSea and what's your role uh, at OpenSea now? Yeah, so OpenSea is the largest marketplace for NFTs. We're a place not only where you can you know, take your NFTs and, and sell them, but you can also discover new NFTs and, and buy them. You know, OpenSea, in addition to sort of the marketplace functionality, we're, we're really um, proud to also be a source of truth for NFTs. There's obviously, this is a very fragmented um, ecosystem with lots of different projects. And we, um, you know, collect a lot, all of the history associated with, with a project, the metadata, the pricing history, the transaction history, you know, really what you need to, to learn more about an NFT project. And so it's become this place for people to not just transact, but also search and, and discover new NFT projects. And it started back in, in 2017, um, really after the first NFT project uh, came to life, CryptoKitties, our founders, Devin Finzer, and Alex Atala, you know, had this vision of many more NFT projects uh, coming to life, and and certainly that's been the case, you know, over the last um, several years. And and so we um, we're a horizontal marketplace, so we serve tons of different categories, be it sports items, collectibles, um, virtual items and wearables, digital art, um, it, you name it, and. Um, and you know, as of June of last year, we did over 100, or this year we did over 160 million in NFTs that were sold on the platform, which um, you know is is really exciting growth from just where we were in, in, in January. And you know, as to myself, so my role at OpenSea is um, you know I lead business development, which is really focused on sort of three core areas. It's partnering with creators, developers, major brands to help them launch NFT projects on OpenSea and be successful, particularly. You know, if you're navigating this for the first time or you're really experienced, you know, we're here to help them be successful um, and, you know, reach uh, the audience on OpenSea. You know, I'd say the second area is there are a lot of third parties that we work with and are working with to improve the OpenSea product. It could be new blockchains, uh, different wallet solutions, um, you know, other payment options. And then the last, you know, category is is really about how do we extend the reach of NFTs and specifically OpenSea. So, you know, marketing through tons of different channels um, and partnering with with brands that are interested in integrating, you know, NFTs and introducing NFTs to their audience. Um, we're a small, nimble team of, of two people, but growing very quickly, um, adding a number of different folks uh, to the team. And, and I'd say, yeah, I, I come from uh, different types of marketplace in the physical world with with Uber and, and ride sharing and then Lime uh, with, with scooters and electric bikes. Um, and I was so excited, um, you know, when I started to get into NFTs um, at the beginning of the year, of just the promise and potential for NFTs to really uh, be a game changer for creators and help them, you know, better, more directly engage their fans, monetize their work, and really take a lot of control uh, back. And we've seen that certainly with digital art being one of the, the, the first major, major categories for NFTs. And, you know, I'm excited about OpenSea being this horizontal marketplace because, we get to serve all of the different creators and, and different types of new and innovative NFT projects that come to life and help them be successful. Great, thank you so much for the intro, Ryan. Uh, and I think, I believe that there are a lot to talk about today, uh, given your background and what OpenSea is doing in this market. So just uh, a quick intro of NFT, just in case the audience are not really familiar with what NFT is. 
So NFTs or non-fungible tokens are a type of digital asset designed to show someone has ownership of unique virtual items, such as online pictures, videos, and even sports trading card. And the asset can only be held by one person at a time, and the ownership is recorded on a digital ledger blockchain. So as Raya, you mentioned that we are going through the incredible year for NFT. The sales of non-fungible tokens have surged a record highs in the first half of the, half of the year. Uh, there has been over 2.5 billion in NFT sale in the first six months of this year, uh, according to that Raider, which is a massive increase over the 13.7 million in sale for the same period last year, right? So um, you mentioned how fast we have been growing, but what do you think uh, drove the recent incredible growth of the NFT market? And how do you think it is different from 2017 uh, when OpenSea was first introduced and launched? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I think it's it's certainly a combination of a number of different factors. There's not a, a single driver of that, and it's you know ultimately you know comes down to a lot of hard work by folks across the you know the NFT space over the last several years. I think you know perhaps this year with the current you know massive growth cycle, there are a few tipping points. You know, one example being, you know, the $69 million Beeple sale, which obviously drove tons of headlines around the world, mainstream coverage, I think, particularly demonstrated the economic opportunity for digital art uh, and artists who previously, you know, that had, didn't have a great avenue to be able to, to monetize their work. And, um, you know, the idea of, you know, sending a, a, you know, a USB drive with a work of art that you've sold to someone. It's just not an interesting prospect for a collector, but in, in this case with NFTs, um, there is that instantaneous transfer upon a sale. There is the provenance associated with that work of art, which is obviously incredibly important. And um, you know everything is is decentralized and on the blockchain. And so, I, you know, I, I think that that just demonstrated the economic opportunity for creators um, and this massive change um, in in the internet economy um, as things are decentralized. I, another thing that I think you know broke even more into the mainstream was NBA Top Shot, which obviously basketball in the NBA, massive global popularity, uh, really approachable price points as well. They're you know very expensive NBA Top Shot moments, but also you know uh, moments that you can buy for a few bucks, and 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 certainly a cool application and different take on your sports collectible or trading card, and that started to open you know further open up the door to a mainstream audience, and you know what we've seen on OpenSea. Certainly, you know, tons of celebrities and interest from celebrities like Rob Gronkowski, who did, you know, a really successful NFT project that did about uh, 1.8 million in, in volume uh, on a primary sale. The Golden State Warriors did over $2 million in primary sale Saturday Night Live. Um, you know, Reddit has, has done their crypto snooze on, on OpenSea. There's tons of appetite from celebrities and brands to take advantage of, you know, sort of the unique properties of NFTs to create amazing new types of content, to engage their fans and users, and, and certainly find a new way to, to monetize things. And so, you know, I think it's just, you know, the broader world being introduced to just the power of the NFT and, and, and all of those sorts of elements. Um, and, and, but it's, it's certainly not just down to that. It's down to lots of work over the last several years that, you know, folks like our founders and others across the ecosystem have put to, to really, um, scale and, and, and build amazing products in this space. Yeah, right. And I cannot agree with you more. Uh, so when we first invest in, uh, the day for lab, which launched, uh, NBA Top Shot that you just mentioned in 2018. Uh, at that time, it felt like the entire NFT market was driven by crypto blockchain people and not the traditional, not many traditional IP holders such as celebrity or even the sports star that you mentioned, or even just artists, uh, digital artists were interested in NFT. But now I see this market as completely has changed, right? It is driven by the IP owner celebrity and then digital artists who want to have more access 
uh, to their fans and their potential uh, fans as well. So I completely agree with what you say. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I have to say there are some comments saying that the NFT market it is uh, is at a massive bubble. Uh, in the first week of June, the New York Post and some other media uh, declared that the NFT market was a bubble that popped in May. Uh, and indeed, some data show that, that the price volume peaked even earlier in April. And even the NBA top shot, uh, their price uh, like volume is down 33%. So do you think that we are in a bubble? And more importantly, where do you think it's going in the future? How will the NFT work uh, in our lives in the in the future? In your opinion? Yeah, I, I certainly don't think it's a bubble. Uh, you know, I'm, I wouldn't be at OpenSea if I thought it was. But also, the data proves that. Um, you know, as I said at, at the beginning, you know, uh, you know, we we did over 160 million in NFT sold on OpenSea in the month of June. That was by far our best month ever. Um, above and beyond which what you know many people look at march or april as the peak we did our best month ever in june and and we've already um i can already report that we'll, we'll do our best month ever beating june in the month of july and we obviously have um still plenty of time to go in this month and some really exciting projects that are, are dropping on open sea over the next week or so and so um you know there is you know, certainly there are certain projects like in the traditional collectibles or trading card world that really take off and, and then obviously maybe softens in, in, in some areas. Um, but I think what's amazing, you know, as in the physical world, but maybe even more so in the digital world is there's just still tons of uh, uh, creativity and tons of new projects being released. And it's it, you're right, it's not just for major brands, but it's from artists and emerging creators and musicians and you know we think that the 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 pr like the properties associated with nfts and the promise of nfts is not just tied to a single project but really um is applicable uh, for all sorts of of new applications yeah and then um we know that currently nft are heavily focused on like digital arts and also some gaming uh, do you think there is like, any specific area you see that the NFT market naturally expand to next? And what category of uh, digital arts or what category of digital item do you think it's going to be the future uh, for the NFT? Yeah, it's a good question. I'm, you know, I think again, you know, we're excited about a whole host of categories um, that have yet to be explored. You know, in the case of what's next, I'm really excited and bullish on music. I think, like art, digital art, there's you know a ton of variety when it comes to music genres, and um, that obviously appeals to a really diverse um, audience and and set of you know music fans all around the world. And and there's this real need to, for musicians to be able to find new ways to monetize their work and, and better engage and reach their fans more directly and not have to go through a lot of the, the middle middle entities that sort of exist and sit between a musician and their fans. And we saw this, you know, we did something with Kings of Leon a few months ago where they were the first band to release their album as an NFT. Um, you know, it came with limited edition vinyl, vinyl in some cases, you know, front row seats to any future concert for life. We think that's just scratching the surface and and, you know, be it, you know, new music being released, ways to participate in the growth and value of, you know, certain songs or certain albums that fans can actually participate in that. Um, I think music is is really ripe for, for NFTs. And then I'd say like ticketing is another one where we've really just scratched the mm -hmm. surface. You know, I imagine a world where, you know, folks attending this, their ticket uh, to listen to the stream or for physical events is actually an NFT and it's a way for them you know, to be able to more easily trade them, to showcase them, um, or perhaps even, you know, if you attend a certain number of events, there's a, a reward and gamification element where it unlocks, you know, exclusive access to something else in the future. And so, you know, ticketing for NFTs, I think it's going to be a much easier way to transfer and, and, and trade tickets, um, but then also to create tons of new experiences around um, events and ticketing, whether in the real world or online that, you know, currently isn't possible um, with the way that ticketing exists today. Yeah, 
um, you mentioned that you are definitely interested in many different uh, digital items. Uh, and you open see you guys are uh, aiming to become a more uh, open marketplace, right? And I think there are definitely pros and cons of being an open marketplace versus a dedicated one or two IPM platforms such as NBA Top Shot or even our gaming platforms such as X Infinity, which has been growing uh, relatively fast in last one or two months. So what are the current status and some challenges that you face as an open marketplace? Yeah, I would say like the internet, there there will be there won't be a single winner in you know on the blockchain or in the NFT world. I think I would expect there to continue be to be, you know, new and, and IP specific ecosystems and platforms in addition to a, a horizontal marketplace like OpenSea. You know, you know, for OpenSea, we're we're really excited about, you know, the fact that we're able to take this broad approach that really is focused on providing tremendous value to collectors and sellers. You can trade anything, be it a collectible, an event ticket, or something else. Um, and you can do that across a wide variety of blockchains. You know, as I said, we serve 200 plus categories. We also are multi-chain. Um, we, we certainly support Ethereum. We've added Clayton support. And then, you know, recently we announced uh, Polygon on OpenSea, which allowed us to create uh, a gas-free marketplace, which is really exciting. So uh, buyers don't need to pay uh, gas, so they're able to, you know, buy, you know, there's this creativity element to be able to buy $5 items, which, you know, could be a ticket or could be a song for a dollar or could be $50 items. It also allows creators to get into the NFT space and also get into crypto without having to bring crypto to the table. They're actually able to earn their way into the you know, a cryptocurrency. And so um, we're really excited about, you know, adding tons of different categories and supporting, you know, the blockchains that have interesting NFT projects and that collectors are looking, looking uh, for, you know, I think from our perspective, you know, we're still a small team. Uh, and obviously, the space has really picked up over the last six to seven months. We're really focused on scaling the team and hiring. So we have, you know, uh, tons of roles across engineering and product and uh, my team on partnerships and marketing um, because we, we want to seize that opportunity, which is we want to build the best collector, the best marketplace for collectors and sellers, you know, uh, across a wide variety of, of NFTs. Um, and similarly, like there are a lot of different types of, you know, creators out there because we're a small team that we haven't been able to support helping get them into the NFT space. And so we're going to be scaling up the team to be able to provide that support, um, you know, be it mm -hmm. in some of these new categories like music. And so, you know, I think that there is such a wide opportunity um, and we're going to be very thoughtful and focused on, you know, not trying to do everything at once. Uh, but um, we feel this in incredible opportunity before us to be able to create this broad marketplace um, and, and sort of be the trusted source for all sorts of NFTs, you know, across, across, um, the whole ecosystem. And, and, you know, we think that that's, you know, going to be a really fundamental part of, of mm -hmm. the NFT space going forward. Right. Um, I mean, as you mentioned, OpenSea recorded its best month ever in June in terms of NFT sales volume. Uh, so congratulations on that. Uh, yeah. OpenSea facilitated over 200,000 NFT sales across nearly 40,000 active traders. Um, and what have it been OpenSea's competitive advantage to become the number one in this market? And what are you preparing for the future uh, market trend and competition just because there are new startups have been popping up every day in the similar field? So, it's curious what's your competitive advantage and how you're preparing for the future. Yeah, you know, I think as I said earlier, you know, we don't expect there to be a single winner in there's in this space. And again, it very much mirroring what hap what has happened, you know, with the emergence and growth of the internet. Um, our chief focus is really on building, you know, um, you know, the best possible ex experience for consumers. And so we really, I think, you know, our our competitive advantage and what we're focused on is not our competition, but really about having a close relationship and dialogue with our 
our collectors and sellers on what what do they need and what do they want. We want to deliver the best possible experience, be it you know for for collectors, making it super approachable, not just for the early adopter audience, but also to develop features and reduce friction in the experience for you know uh, people that aren't into crypto to be able to get into NFTs. I, I think we we really believe that you know NFTs is this you know bring this opportunity to help bring people into the crypto world because there are you know analogous um, uh, things like art, right? People are used to collecting art or, you know, even, you know, digital gaming items like a Fortnite skin, which could be an NFT some one, one day they're, they're sort of in their, their closed ecosystem right now. Um, but people are, you know, understand, you know, uh, those elements. And, and I think that that allows people to be at, you know, blockchain games or, uh, wearables for virtual worlds, or again, digital art or music, um, it is very approachable for a mainstream audience to be able to get them into the crypto space um, through NFTs. And so our goal is really to reduce that barrier, provide education to folks. Um, and and then for sellers, it's, um, again, not just being focused on big brands or IP holders, but it's really about up and coming artists and creators and developers and, and helping build the tools whether you're an experienced coder and, and know a lot about how to develop smart contracts, or you just want to be able to start selling, you know, a, a animation that you created, we want to we want to be able to empower you to, to to do that. And so that's our chief focus. And and I think, you know, that 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 being very very focused on that is 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 certainly helped us to get to this point today, and will help us continue to grow up and see in the future. Right. Um, cause Ryan, you, I think you are a platform expert, <laughs> uh, given your background. So I want to ask you how you grow the platform, like the marketplace, cause there has been always chicken and egg problem, right? There are, uh, artists, uh, who want to sell, uh, their items and there are buyers, I guess, but for this case, especially for OpenSea, you need to educate everyone right what's the blockchain how to use ethereum how to buy ethereum or any other um the crypto assets there is like, so much like information do you have to educate and especially because you're open marketplace and you say you are targeting over 200 categories and there are tons of different types of people so i'm just curious how you prioritize who to target and how to educate them <laughs> Yeah, it's a great question, and and there's no you know one single approach. I think um, you know one of the you know sort of a few things that come to mind. I think the first is because we do have so many creators and developers, um, you know, on on OpenSea and and now starting to be brands. They tend to be an amazing um, partner for us in in helping bring their audience to to the NFT world and OpenSea specifically if they are not already going to, to open C on a frequent basis and, or maybe not even in, into NFTs at all. And so, um, you know, obviously creators are promoting their work to their fans and friends, and that is a natural way for us to be able to grow the collector base and, and be able to introduce new people, um, to, to open C. I agree with you. Like there, there are a lot of things that we, are doing and will continue to do to help educate folks. So Devin Finzer, our, our CEO and co-founder created the NFT Bible. Um, it's on our blog. And that is a, a, a really thorough resource for people to learn about, you know, the history of NFTs and, and why NFTs are really interesting. And we're creating lots of tutorials and documentation on, you know, how, how to, you know, get, you know, you know, link your wallet, how to, um, buy an, an NFT, how to list an NFT, uh, and um, you know, on, on, and that's on the collector side. And then on the seller side, we've created this storefront tool, which allows you to mint an NFT, uh, lazy mint an NFT, um, without paying the gas fee on Ethereum. And it's you know a storefront creator tool that looks very much like a tool that you would use to post a blog post. And we've sort of simplified through a standard co smart smart contract. Um, a, a lot of the inputs, whether it's the name of the collection, uploading the the, the image or the the asset file, um, putting in the sort of data and traits around that project, setting your royalties, listing it for sale. You know, we've made that easy for non-developers. In addition to allowing people bring their their custom smart contracts to OpenSea, um, 
And then I'd say in the future, you know, we're certainly we, we're testing things like a fiat on ramp to allow people to bring their credit card and pay with fiat currency um, for an item. Uh, we think that's really exciting. And, and certainly there's demand from a more mainstream audience to be able to do that. And then over time, perhaps they start to trade um, with Ethereum or another another currency um, that's not fiat on OpenSea. And so, you know, I think it's a combination of education. It's certainly listening to a lot of those you know, non-early adopter audiences on the, the types of product features that they need, like a, a fiat on-ramp to, to be able to get into to the NFT world. Um, and, um, and yeah, so that's how we're thinking about it. Yeah, great. Yeah, I think like it's definitely a time for uh, mass adoption for the NFT. So I think like the education for the non-crypto or non-early adopter audience is going to get more and more important. And thanks for doing a lot of education for this market. Uh, and I want to also congratulations on your recent funding of 23 USD million uh, from A16Z. So it's a huge uh, achievement for your team. Uh, just curious, how was the process and then what you have learned from the investment process? And is there any like specific data that they are looking for, such as like growing number of users? Uh, retention by batch or the resale ratio, the revenue, what have been the most important data uh, for negotiating the uh, investment decision and how what you have learned from the, from the process? Yeah, I, I think it really comes down to, you know, there is incredible enthusiasm and I think, you know, certainly a very strong belief now in, in you know, what NFTs and, and other projects on blockchain, you know, how they're going to be fundamental to changing and improving the internet economy and again this sort of um, empowerment to all sorts of creators and 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 giving them control back and and uh, one it's it's obviously great for that audience but two the the sort of market size associated with that opportunity is is massive um and you know um, in many ways accelerated by the pandemic we're obviously spending a lot more time uh, online these days and so it makes a ton of sense that you would want to be able to own a lot of the digital assets that exist in your life online. Um, and, and people really want to own their digital goods. And so I think there's a belief in sort of that need on the, the consumer side as well, you know, as it relates to sort of things that, that the, um, you know, I think really um, resonate, you know, from a data perspective, it's a lot of your traditional, um, you know, marketplace metrics. So it's, you know, volume of, of uh, GMB in sales. It's, um, you know, it is, you know, the growth in collector collectors. It's the average transaction size of a particular, you know, of, of trades on the marketplace. Um, it's really about the liquidity of the marketplace that, that you know, folks are looking for and, and, and obviously growth. And so in the case of OpenSea, we've obviously, like a lot of folks in the space, experienced tremendous growth over the last six, seven months. We're, you know, 45x in transaction volume in the first half of this year, um, which is which is really amazing. Um, and it's a strong business. Like it's a, it's a really, um, it's a business that, that makes money um, at this stage. And so I think it's a combination of, you know, a paradigm shift in, um, you know, this sort of internet economy that, that NFTs bring uh, and, and, and certainly the growth um, that we're already seeing before, I think we've even broken out from a, a fairly early adopter audience to the mainstream audience, um, right. you know, is, is certainly um, it shows the promise uh, of this space. Great. So we actually have 10 seconds left. So <laughs> what's your goal and visual? What do you expect to see in five years? In five seconds. Oh, five years. I'd say, you know, I, you know, it feels like one month um, at OpenSea and in the NFT world is five years. So it's it's hard to really truly project an actual five years. I think, um, you know, for me in five years, I would love to see, um, uh, again, really focused on a lot of these new types of applications, um, ticketing, uh, music, and um, um, sort of you know, I'd love to see my parents owning and buying NFTs out there uh, and folks like my parents, um, because I think we, we, we then have really, truly successfully democratized um, access and introduced folks to this really exciting um, uh, space of the NFT world. Yeah, yeah, I'm 
also very thrilled to see that future <laughs> pretty soon. So thank you so much uh, for joining joining uh, the uh, the SCC, uh, SCCB, the DeFi Summit. So thank you, Ryan. And thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.